new episode of Spoon Stuff Stories is out now. Mrs. Sick animating, me doing all the voices, it's a fun time to be had by all. Check it out. Where physical things can be clearly defined, touched, or measured. Okay, stop right there, criminal scum. What the hell kind of choice of stock footage for touching physical things is that? I mean, everybody knows that rope isn't real. That's what the whole how long is a piece of string thing is about, cause it isn't. See, got you thinking there, didn't I? But you really want me to blow your mind? Think about this. How drunk is Sir Sick? Can't answer that, cause the answer is just yes. Because spirit science. Non-physical things tend to be more like concepts and make up everything from numbers, mathematical functions, and philosophical relations. All right, but those are non-physical things that in general have purpose and actually, you know, achieve things, especially math shit. I mean, numbers might be somewhat abstract, but you can do things with them, like measure distances and figure out how much whiskey I have left, making them very real. But just because some non-physical things have uses, doesn't mean that all non-physical things do necessarily. And we all know you are going to extrapolate that to shit that doesn't do anything and has no valuable purpose. Spoilers, I guess, but if you didn't know that spirit science was going to be predictable and worthless, then hi, nice to meet you, you must be new here. Something like the color red is an abstract concept. That's not red. That's clearly very, 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 very dark pink. You can tell by how it looks red. And I thought that the one thing that you could do would be colors. We got you that book for toddlers and everything. But I suppose you just ate it like you do with every book we get you. I would blame myself, but I don't take responsibility for any of my actions. So what are you going to do? And while we all mostly know what the color red is, trying to describe redness to a blind person is easier said than done. Ah, uh, I could take a crack at it. So red, right, is like that orange color, but more red. What do you mean that doesn't help? Fine. You know that feeling when you want to smash all the humans into a fine paste because they won't stop being the worst? Yeah, that feeling is what red looks like. In the same way, an emotion isn't exactly physical. Everybody knows that emotions aren't real. I mean, there's only one emotion, and it's mine. It belongs to me, and none of you can have it. I don't care if mum said it was your turn on the emotion. Dad said it was mine. Sure, we have physical responses to emotions, like raised blood pressure when stressed. Yeah, for some reason right now, my blood pressure is through the f***ing roof. I wonder why. Certainly isn't because this is a spirit science vid, so at some point he's going to say something completely overwhelmingly, bafflingly stupid, and I'm just sitting here waiting for that to happen. Every moment it comes a step closer, and the palpitations become stronger till I pass out from the stress. That's never happened. All the time. But the actual emotion itself is non-physical, and yet it is felt on a physical level it's odd that you seem to purely be demonstrating the more, let's say, negative emotions, almost like they're easier to show, but the fact that you can demonstrate them at all, again, shows that while immaterial, we can still present them to a certain degree in a way that the vast majority of people will understand. Now, who's guessing that point is going to come back to bite him in his big blue ass? To such an extent that no one denies it exists. <laughs> Do I even need to be here at this point? Maybe I'll save that for later, you know, if I can brain good enough to remember to use it in order to make him debunk himself. As is almost certainly going to happen, because he always does. Perhaps then, it could be useful to think of our soul as akin to our awareness. Because, ah yes, this was about the souls, wasn't it, and how big sciencey it totally is. But no, your soul is not your awareness. We have things that equate to your awareness already, and none of them require even remotely supernatural explanations for us to understand how they work. This is just you saying, hey, you know all these things that we have perfectly reasonable ways to describe? Yeah, I'm going to chuck my magic thing on top. No takesies backsies! And that's where real things come from. Or maybe even our awareness of our awareness. No, your awareness of your awareness is the same goddamn thing. Also, those eyes are f***ing haunting. I think I'm going to see those for the next six months every time I try to go to sleep. The eyes of stupid staring into my non-existent soul, reminding me that no matter how stupid I think I am, there's someone out there making me look incompetent. Could it be that our soul is that space in between emotions that allows us to perceive them? 
Oh, there it is. There's the stupid thing mixed with a pinch of word salad just to make my blood pressure so high blood starts squirting out of my nose like a f***ing super soaker. And I don't mean those modern pansy ass health and safetyfied super soakers. I mean ones from the 90s where you could knock someone's eye out with it. Which explains your collection there, Blue. Not gonna lie, I'm almost impressed. Also, the soul is the space between emotions that allows us to perceive them. What does that even mean? And as I said, how is that useful? Hmm, how is that something you can draw a simple set of images like To such an extent that no one denies it exists. Oh hey look I remembered! But yeah, tell me one way that you can show how a soul actually works that most people will understand and agree with and I'll show you something that's definitely not that. A common thread we've been seeing so far in ancient philosophies Ah <sighs> uh, yes, ancient philosophies and their tendency to be completely wrong, and based on the very limited perceptions of humans, and centre largely around basic universal concepts and ideas that they can steal from their neighbours. Yes, those are always such useful things for the modern person to be getting on with, and not absolutely worthless for anything other than being kind of interesting anthropologically. No. Is that the soul comprises the truest essence of who and what we are. Are you saying that ancient people who didn't understand dick all about how the body works all came to the conclusion that something inexplicable must be the cause of it? No, no, that can't be right. Next you'll be telling me that they did that with everything they didn't understand. I mean, they certainly wouldn't invoke some supernatural being or another in order to explain things about the cosmos, for which they had not yet acquired the knowledge, skills and technologies to figure out. Why would they do that? Including our logical reasoning personality, hopes, dreams, fears, smells, sounds, that weird thing that your eye does when you're trying to concentrate while you honk in your sleep, the fact that everything you say is more idiotic than the last, your favourite soup. All these things can be explained by your brain mostly. Now of course I wasn't going to say soul because that would be f***ing stupid. It's all largely based on a complex web of synapses and that's why when someone takes a biff to the noggin, it can have literal impacts on their personality from who they are as a person to things they used to enjoy no longer being pleasant and craving others which they used to hate. But wait no, when they hit their head, they also just randomly took a kick in the soul. And that severe head trauma is just an unrelated coincidence. Yeah. That must be it. As well as our approach and philosophy on life, and how we interact with the world. Yeah, no, that's got nothing to do with some intangible bullshit and everything to do with the brain. Now, that isn't to say we has done the full understandings of how the brain works. I mean, I have eaten hundreds of the things and I still have no perfect way to prepare them. But that also doesn't mean that you can just leap up and say, Haha, since we don't know how that bit works, that Sam must be where the soul act. That's just God of the Gaps argumentation. Well, a soul of the gaps, but it's the same thing. And it's a fallacious argument for a really good reason. All of that really does sound like our awareness, perception, or consciousness. What, the soul stuff? No, it actually doesn't, like, at all. What it sounds like is, as I said, you have all of these things that we can explain, and then you just come along and decided that it is the soul. But unlike all the other intangible but useful concepts, the soul doesn't help describe anything in a useful way. Not even itself as a concept, which is why there are so many interpretations that all hold different concepts and are also generally vague as f it's almost like no one can actually prove shit when it comes to such an idea and we would be better off moving on from it and doing literally anything else. I recommend Ski Ball, but that's only because it's fun to say. Maybe we can think of the soul then as the resting, neutral state of the self that is uncolored by stimuli. What a great description of the soul. It's a description that basically means absolutely f***ing nothing. I love it. It's the perfect description. We should use it for deities too. God is just the universal state when nothing is happening. It's a bit like the God just means nature definition. Well, we already have a word for that. It's called nature. Why not use that instead of invoking supernatural shit? And the same goes for the soul. It's just the brain. What the f*** is wrong with calling it that? Oh right, because you're so desperate to be special and would rather believe something that doesn't make sense than use accurate terms to describe things. Whether they are internal or external. It is all internal. All of it comes from the most internal of the body's cavities. I'm saying that it comes out the asshole. if you didn't know where I was very, very, very obviously going with that. Come on people, keep up. 
Maybe the soul is that space of awareness that allows us to perceive at all. Yeah, it couldn't be anything in that fleshy meat sack. It has to be magic. Otherwise, what's the point? Look, I know what some of you are going to say. And yeah, consciousness still isn't fully understood. And you know what? Fine. But you know what you do when you aren't sure about something? I'll give you a clue. You don't make up some magic bullshit. You actually try to figure it out with science. If we gave up and just said, must be magic, every time humanity didn't understand something, I seriously doubt you've gotten f***ing anything done. Although I do appreciate it as an excuse for laziness. That is something I can vibe with. In this way, it would be pretty similar to consciousness. In fact, one could argue that they're one and the same. One could, and one would be wasting everyone's time. If consciousness comes from the brain, then consciousness is the brain, so the brain is the soul. So we don't need the word soul, it's just an extremely outdated term for something we now have a greater understanding of. And again, I don't see why you're so obsessed with using ancient crap to explain this. When the old garbage always get superseded by actual understanding. There has to be a point where you say, right, this thing is magical, therefore chances are very high that it's not actually true. Let's wait to see what the reality of the situation is before making up a bunch of hoo-ha in order to try and sound clever. In this we reveal what may be the biggest problem that atheists or mechanists have when talking about the soul. First off, okay, cool. Don't think I've ever had the pleasure of having Blue Boy tell me what I think. And second, what the f*** is a mechanist? That sounds like a robot overlord. In fact, it f***ing is, from Fallout. What the hell has that person got to do with the philosophical construct of the soul? They're only interested in the cold hard logic of robo-brains. The one use for human brains that I approve of, aside from eating them. But only if they kill all the humans. Which is the concept of divinity. What does it even mean for something to be divine? Well, there is one divine substance in all the known universe, and it is my piss, mostly because it's 98% whiskey, and about 2% unknown substances. But aside from that, there isn't anything that has so-called divinity in any way that anyone has been able to demonstrate, in anything approaching a useful way. Following the definitions, divine essentially means a quality of a deity, and deity is defined as the essential nature or essence of a god or goddess. I wonder why atheists, people who don't buy the claim of god or gods, would have problems with someone claiming X, Y, Z to have the qualities of the divine. It's almost like they don't think those things are real and any claims about them are a giant steaming load of horseshit or something. Humdy humdy hum. Nah, that can't be it. It must be because they hate god or something. But why would anyone hate me? And so, of course, then looking up the definition of God, we find a being conceived as the perfect, omnipotent, omniscient originator and ruler of the universe. That's a definition of God, but that's not the only one I have a problem with. It's any concept that requires some form of supernatural explanation. Because if it's supernatural, then it's not part of nature, and so far there's not been a single thing proven to hold that um, ability. But yeah, no, I don't care about that specific definition, as you imply. That's not what matters, even if it's more silly and something worth countering. All things that I perceive to be incorrect do too. It wouldn't make any sense for me not to. So there's a question here. If the soul exists and it comes directly from the essence of God, then it's a part of divinity that exists within us. Exactly. Like I said, it's got nothing to do with being correct and everything to do with being special. It doesn't matter that there is already perfectly reasonable explanations for things. I'm going to act like those don't exist and use this magical explanation that makes me super special and super important because I am neither of those things. It's kind of sad, really. Is that why he's blue, do you think? And there's a counterthought to this. Don't pretend you had a thought in the first place. And I thought the counterthought was... You're wrong, and being ridiculous, stop pretending that the concept of spirit size is anything other than a radically stupid misnomer. Perhaps there's nothing inherently divine about it. Maybe it's simply another part of the universe we haven't found yet. Well, aside from the fact that, yes, we f***ing have brains, which are absolutely part of the universe that we have found and you can, you know, do stuff with, you freaking div. Do you even have one? Oh, f*** me, I just realised you don't. Shit, that explains everything. 
Wait, before you go, I have something super important to tell you. It's life or death. It will change everything forever. Nope. Wait, it's gone. Oh well, probably wasn't important. But while I have you, don't forget to comment, subscribe and notify. And if you want more of my smexy voice, check out Mrs. Six channel Spoon Star Stories, where I narrate and voice all the videos. And she does the work. And if you want to support the channel, check out the merch store for cool t-shirts, or check out Patreon, memberships and PayPal to support directly. Finally, Follow me on the medias of social to get completely pointless guff and to keep up on the latest releases. Oh, I just remembered what I was going to tell you. Whatever you do, don't touch the-